Thank you for the programming. I'm Chase Ingram. I'm Captain America. And I'm missing my buddy. He's not here right now. Wolverine. Old Bill Grundler's coaching right now. But we got some workouts to talk about. I know the, uh, the spin is going live currently. Rocking out with their uh, idea of a trivia game show. We're going to talk quarterfinal workouts. They are released for the teams. We'll go through them, but we're going to start with taking a look back at what has been programmed for the teams, what it means with the new programming. The thing is, is like we're not taking more teams than we ever have before. We're taking more individuals than we ever, ever, ever have before, but we've not taken more teams. We've always taken the top 25 teams to quarter final. So this is business as usual for the team competition. We're not adding in age groups. We're not adding in anything. Like Teams hasn't changed. The only thing that changed is the number of people qualifying from quarterfinals to semifinals. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look back at the last three years of team quarterfinals, what they've been, what the programming looks like, and how that differs from now. Because, like I said, we shouldn't really have changed very much over the last three years to the team programming now because we're not changing the format. It's still the top 25% for teams. It's always been the top 25% for teams. We're qualifying less teams to semifinals than we ever have in the last three years. Hannah B., what did you say? Okay, for real, why dumbbell snatches again? That's a great question. That's a great question, Sarah, and a great observation. Because what we're going to do is we're going to look back at the last three years of team competition for 2021 through 2023. This is the fourth year of the team quarterfinals. Again, we're taking the top 25%, like we always have, from the Open. And as we do that, we'll take a look at what we had at the team finals. If you guys are rolling with us, I want to thank Element 26 for being a partner of the show, if you guys need anything as far as CrossFit accessories are concerned, scan the code, go to element26.co and use the code GETWITH15 for 15% off. I need to re-up my thumb tape before semifinals, or uh, sorry, quarterfinals. I'm definitely not making semifinals for that start. So let's take a look back at the last few years of team competition at quarterfinals, and we'll start with the year is 2021. We have quarterfinals for the first time, and we have the top 25% of teams, registered teams from the Open, moving on to quarterfinals. So let's look at 2021. Event one, we'll call them events. They, I think they called them worked out, workouts back in the day. Uh, two rounds for time, 15. It was a, um, a weird format. The men went first, but they were alternating. And one athlete would go two rounds, 15 strict handstand push-ups, 15 dumbbell hang power cleans, followed by 100 double-unders as fast as they could. Then male athlete two would then take on the same thing, while male athlete one rested. And then they'll take on the second part, 15 kipping handstand push-ups, 15 dumbbell shoulder to overhead, 100 double-unders. Once they're done, male athlete would go. And then the women will tackle that. Uh, event number two, male-female pairs, 70 synchro GHD sit-ups, 14 rope climbs, 70 synchro pistols, 50 GHD sit-ups, 10 rope climbs, 50 alternating pistols, male-female pair one, and then male-female pair two would go. Event number three, in 2021, we had male or same-sex pairs. Athlete one would do 100 wall ball shots and 120 cal row. Athlete two would do 120 wall ball shots and 100 cal row. Both men would go first, side by side, and then they will hand off to the women when both pairs are done. Not a lot of teamwork there. Event four, four at max front squat. And then event five, which they had five events that year, was 963. This is just a relay. Snatches at 175 and 125 and a 30 and 24 inch box and then box burpee, box jump overs. That was 2021 team events. If you look at what those were, if we look at the formats, event one was a relay interval style. So there was no teamwork per se. It was the male one would go, male two would go, they would rest, and then the women would go. So it was just a relay. It was just an interval. The movements they had, strict handstand push-ups, handstand push-ups, dumbbell push press, hang power cleans, and double unders. Event two, the format was a mixed pair format with synchro work, and it was a relay format with the pair. So one pair would go followed by the second pair, a lot like what the first event was. GHD sit-ups, rope climbs, and pistols. Yes, still a thing. You guys can vote. What do you think about the workouts? 
A lot of things about the workouts. And then event three, format, same-sex pair, still in a relay form, right? The men and women would be in a pair. The men would go first. They weren't working together. They were necessarily just rowing and doing wall balls at the speed of their slowest partner. And then they would hand off to the women. Event four was a total weightlifting individual event of front squats. And then event five, you had another relay format, and it was an individual format, just like the squatting of snatches and burpee box jump overs. It was a total of five scored events. Yes, Melanie, solo chase. Five scored events, 13 total movements in those events. Six were gymnastics, five weightlifting, two monostructural. Some things to take away, there were really zero events programmed in 2021 that had all teammates working together. Zero. In a team competition, there was zero teamwork. One max lift, and it was a single modality test. And the other four were relay formats. Male, female, male, male, pair, pair, you go, I go. Like I said, no teamwork involved there. That was 2021. We moved to 2022. Team quarterfinals. Event number one, you had a male, female pair, male one, female one. They would do 30 dumbbell squats. The men would, or the male one would followed by handstand walks, and then they would switch. Dumbbell squats, handstand walks, and they would hand off the male two and female two. I do feel lonely. I do feel lonely. But it's all good. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. Get ready for some knowledge. This is an interval-style workout of front and rack lunges, wall, handstand walks, pistols, handstand walks, male-female pairs working together. Event number two, synchronize the whole team finally working together, line-facing burpees and shuttle runs in pairs. Event three, clean and jerk. This would be a theme. Clean and jerk. Male, male, female, female. This is just a relay. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, go. Well, Barclay, you only have two options. It's either male or female. So... We'll be saying one, one or the other. Just a relay for clean and jerks with ascending weights, five, four, three, two, one, as fast as you can. No teamwork there. Except maybe changing the weights. Order doesn't matter. Event four, for time, the women would start. Synchro toes to bar, synchro box jumps, synchro alternating dumbbell snatches, total of 10 rope climbs, work your way back up the ladder, hand off to the men. And at number five, relay style again. 21 thrusters at weight one, 21 chest of bar pull-ups, 15 thrusters at weight two, nine ring muscle-ups. Format for event one, same-sex pairs in a relay with some shared work. The movements, dumbbell front squats, handstand walks, dumbbell front rack lunges, and pistols. Event two, a relay, uh, sorry, synchro format with the full team. Line facing burpees and shuttle runs. Event three, the format was a relay format. And the movement was clean and jerk. Five, four, three, two, one was the uh, relay style. So we had a relay format here in event three. Event four, same sex pairs. So you had synchro work. You shared work on the rope climbs, but it was still a relay between the women and the men. Toes to bar, box jumps, dumbbell snatches, and rope climbs. And then event five, another relay format for individual races. Thrusters, chest bar pull-ups, and muscle-ups. Same number of scored events, five. Total movements, 14, so one more than we had in 2021. Eight gymnastics movements over five weightlifting movements. Not uncommon. There's more gymnastics movements than there. Well, no, there's more weightlifting movements than gymnastics movements. So more on that. Uh, one monostructural. Again, you had one event involving the full team this time. No max lift, but the single modality test was still a weightlifting test. Four relay format events, just like we saw last time. Four of the five involved a relay. Two of the five here involved a relay of single individual athletes. So teamwork, not so much. 2023, we had four total events, but five scores. Say it however you want, five events. Could be the same thing. Event one, 15-minute AMRAP. Ten synchro front squats, all four team members working together at 185 and 125. Remember those weights, 185 and 125. Three handstand walks each, alternating reps with male and female pairs. Male, female pairs. Barkley, what are you doing? You spitting stats in here? Female. Oh, that's true. I do say male twice every time I see male or female. Event two, interval. Male, female pairs. 
pair will row 500 meters each on their own rower. They'll do 10 synchro shoulder overhead at what weights? 185 and 125. Huh. Foreshadowing. And then max rope climbs in the time remaining of that three minute interval while the other is resting. And then, uh, John, you better, your audio better be better than it was on spins. <laughs> uh, check one, two. So yeah. far, so good. So far, so good. Ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead. This is John Young. John, I really enjoy that trivia game that you guys just made up out of the blue on uh, Spins Podcast. Dude, I hope your questions are better than his because that, that was ridiculous. <laughs> that was, he, uh, where did you think of something like that? Barkley, I, any idea? It's all him, man. It was I had no idea what was going on <laughs> the whole time. Oh, wonderful. If, if anybody doesn't know, which you should because we've already announced it, but uh, this is coming up next week sometime. Oh yeah. Don't you worry, everyone. And I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start researching because that was not. I didn't feel good when you didn't we know got you the covered. questions. We got you covered. All right, John. I'm just going through the old team workouts to foreshadow what we have to come. We're working on 2023 right now. Okay. Uh, all right, we're on to event three. For time, one athlete, another individual relay, which isn't necessarily bad. We'll get to that in a second. One of the five. They uh, forced the order, so they made you go female, male, female, male, which, you know, okay. And then when the last person was done, or sorry, yes, when the second, the last male completes the last muscle-up, then you move on to test B, which is AMRAP in five minutes, max clean and jerks at 275 and 185. And if you guys remember in 2022, it was a clean and jerk relay, five down to one, so... A repeat of the single modality weightlifting test using the same movements from 2022 to 2023. And then finally, we finish up with a 17 minute AMRAP male, female pairs, shuttle runs, and synchro dumbbell thrusters, followed by, or sorry, it was a seven minute AMRAP for each. So seven minutes for male, female pair one, seven minutes for male, female pair two. Event number one. Format, team synchro. All athletes moving at the same time and then same sex pairs on the handstand walks. You had front squats and handstand walks. We have front squats for reps here. We had uh, dumbbell squats in the previous one in 2022. So squat stamina capacity at moderate loads might be a uh, thing for teams to train going forward, but we'll see that in a second. Event two, format, same sex pairs, synchro work, interval work. Row, shoulder overhead, and rope climbs. Event three of the format was a relay format, one after the other, though they forced the order of athletes. Bar muscle-ups, deadlifts, GHD sit-ups. Event 3B was just a clean and jerk team total for reps. Then event four, mixed pair, synchro, relay, shuttle runs, and dumbbell thrusters. Five scored events, 11 total movements, so the smallest number of movements we've had. 13 in 2021, 14 in 2022, 11 here. Four of them gymnastics, so we cut out half the gymnastics we had in 2022. There were eight that year. Same number of weightlifting movements, number five, and added a monostructural. There is one event involving full team working together, so that's the first time we've really had that strategy-wise. And then we had no max lift, again, for the second year in a row, but it was a single modality lifting test for the second year in a row, and it was a clean and jerk. For the second year in a row. And then, John, that brings us to this year. And before we get to that specifically, I like to talk about team events in the programming because I love programming for teams. It's a thing that I, uh, when I first started getting into CrossFit and coaching, I coached teams, programmed for teams, I picked teams, uh, sent four teams to the CrossFit Games. The highest finish was seventh. Picked all their rosters, programmed for them. Got to coach them and got to watch uh, teams of six at the time. A lot of people make a lot of big sacrifices to get to the ultimate uh, goal, and it was really cool to watch. But um, when you look at team competition and programming relative to individual, the things that we always look at with an individual competition is the balance of the programming or what the programming is supposed to be. 
So if you think about testing fitness, right, you got you know, your three different training modal or movement modalities, right? You got gymnastics, weightlifting, monostructural. What's the balance there? What's the balance of the movement patterns that you're using? What's the balance of the stimuluses? Is it going to be heavy? Is it going to be light? Is it going to be long? Is it going to be short? Is the volume going to be there? Is all that balance going to find the fittest 40 moving on to semifinals for individuals? On the team side, you still have all that in play, but on the team side, you add new elements. You have different ways to test team work. You've got synchro work. You've got bulk work where you say, this team just collectively finish this specific number of reps or this team get this collective number of reps in this time frame, all working together. You have same-sex pairs, mixed pairs, you can do a relay, you can do a waterfall. There's so many other things that are tested in the team competition outside of just the fittest, you know, a fitness level only. John, for you, what are some of your favorite ways to test the teams outside of, say, just the general workout and movements itself? I mean, I think the worm, anything with the worm mm. is, and I know you can't, we don't have that in quarterfinals, but like in semifinals and the games and, or at Wadapalooza or um, when it like stuff like the worm or like synchro ring muscle ups or synchro, so a harder movement that synchro or something where the whole team has to do it all together. I are parts of my they're my favorite type of as far as team workouts go because mm. it shows who actually works together as a team versus these people just got a lot of fit people together. Yeah. And and that's always something mayhem would always do better than everybody else. There might have been a collection of fitter people, but their team cohesion was always the best out of everybody. And um, that was never proven better than I think 2019 at the CrossFit Games when they got rid of all the team structure and the tightness and like where you had to train and where you had to do your events. It was like, you can pick anyone in the world. You don't even have to train together, just qualify out of a, out of a sanctioned event and then come to the CrossFit Games. And we thought in 2019, we're like, this is the year. This is the year when finally these elite athletes all over the world are gonna band together. They're gonna take down mayhem. And then we realized that exactly what you're talking about is that you could have the fittest four people in the world, the top two men and the top two women. And if you cannot work together as a team and not just like teamwork or worm work, there's so much involved with working together as a team. It won't matter. And that's what mayhem did better than anybody. And they did it in a way that not many people can sign up and log in day in and day out and do that borderline monotonous, just, brain dead, pick up the worm, do this synchro, train five times a week, like be in each other's faces 24 seven. And it's and a certain type of stimulus that you're training too. It's, it's somewhat slower, but always like harder, grindier like yeah. things you're doing. And yeah. I, I know that's hard to explain, but. Well, you're right because rarely is a team event going to smash you from a stimulus perspective like an individual event will. Sometimes it does, but it's, but it's constant. Mm -hmm. And the events are so long and you have to be so dialed in at all times. You can't have three people all working, maybe not even together, but just being on point. And then one just kind of look off to the side, lose their focus, and then things start to unravel from there. Like there's a huge mental component of being on, not just aware of your surroundings and just being in control for yourself. All right, let's look at what is on the docket for these team athletes for quarterfinals. The first event is an interval style. It is with mixed pairs. You'll start a two minute interval, 10 synchro burpees over the bar. This is a lateral burpee, which I can't remember the last time we had a lateral burpee with a barbell in competition, at least in open semis. I don't remember one. And then you have 10 front squats, synchro, at 185 and 125, which is the same exact weight we had in event one for the team workout in 2023. I'm not saying that's bad. I'm not saying that's, I'm just, I'm, I'm connecting a thread. And then in the remainder of those two minutes, you have max Bar muscle, or sorry, max ring muscle ups in the time remaining. Once your two minutes is up, your next male female pair will start. Lateral burpees over the bar, front squats at 185 and 125, max ring muscle ups in the time remaining. 
one set of rings, so well, not necessarily one, but one person working at a time on the rings. And I look at this, John, a lot like I saw last year in event one, is that the burpees, I think, are just there to annoy people as far as synchro lateral. The front squats are the whole workout. Because if you can't move synchro fast and handle that bar well, you're not going to get enough time to get the extra rep or two as a pair times 10 for the team. And what we saw in event one last year, it was just front squat, stamina, and basically squat capacity. That was the limiting factor for the team moving on. In this one, if you get yourself five to 10 seconds since, I mean, how much time do you think they're getting in that two minute? Maybe one to one or less, 45 seconds? I would say one minute. Yeah, even if it's one minute, that means- and probably you're, fading. So you like, and I are gonna get one rotation on the rings. That's yeah. it, one rotation. And so if we can get five seconds faster and I can get one muscle up more or you can get one muscle up more in our pair times 10, it adds up. So if you're slow at all on the front squats, I see this as it's a total, like no one's failing. Well, let me say this. No one qualifying for semifinals is failing ring muscle ups. Nobody is. I, I see it a little differently than that. But maybe, maybe you're But here's right. the thing. If you strategize it right, you're not going to put your two best muscle up people together. No, but I, so you, I think you go like, but you'd go like, I do four, then you do four, then I would go four, then you would go four, and then like the next pair would do the same thing, right? right. And you would do that five rounds over. So sp think, spoken like a true weightlifter. <laughs> you don't think so? You don't think that's how you go about it? You're wasting time. It's a transition. There's no time to have multiple transitions on the muscle. So you think you just do one big set? I'm going to go up there and I'm going to do 10, eight to 10. And you then you're going to go up there and do, do eight five rounds with a two minute break in between. Yeah, of I, guess so. I, do, I guess right? so. I guess so. Now yeah. the compounding factor there where you could see failure. I, and and I'm, I'm saying for those that are qualifying, if you're failing muscle ups in a two minute, every two minutes, we're probably not semifinal caliber athletes and teams. They're only taking 30. I see what you're saying. So like you get, you get, you have a two minute rest after each round get a two minute rest you should after be able each just round. To do your big set and then your your pair does it the other their big set i'm asking you, you for 30 seconds of muscle ups yeah. at most when we have maybe a minute on the first round and we're looking more at 45 seconds on the next round yeah you're right yeah i, I see what you're saying but the compounding factor which could come into play is burpees over the bar though that a major part of the workout itself as far as fatigue overall is still you're going to have to push that a little bit more because you need to save some seconds unless it's more of, listen, I need to get there fresh, not necessarily there first, but you're still blowing up the triceps and chest coming off the ground 50 times. It's still a burpee. I get it. But then you're holding that front rack with synchro, which is going to slow you down. You're going to sit in that front rack position, just smashing your wrists, smashing your forearms and smashing your triceps and shoulders and all of that over the course of five rounds with one max attempt on muscle ups could compound over five rounds i could see that but i think if you want to give yourself a shot at semifinals you're not like and you're failing we're probably not there yeah no and the no. separation is what how fast you can do the front squats right right yeah, so, I agree. And I think you kill your partner if you're the slow one. Right. And that's another thing to do. Who do we pair up? Right. Don't waste necessarily your two best because there's some there's a, not a, a total paradox there, but like usually my best person at the rings probably isn't the best person on the front squat and vice versa. Not for the maybe elite that have well-rounded, but we're still talking team. So there's there's more, I would say, spe yeah, specialists on the team side. Take me, for example, I am terrible at front squats at this weight for this round for synchro, but I'll dance on the rings all day. Mm -hmm. Don't pair me up with someone who necessarily is the same poor front squatter as me because we're not going to give ourselves enough time to maximize our strengths on the rings. We'll almost be wasting it. So it's like, all right, as soon as we finish the front squats, maybe I go up on the rings first since I can do them tired and fatigued better. And then... My partner, who's probably better on the squats and maybe not the rings, 
gets a little bit of a break before they do a max set into a two minute rest. No, that's a great point that you would just be the first one on the rings and then you take the brunt of the fitness. Right. While the lesser of the ring muscle up people get that rest, get that 20 second rest. Yeah. Before they have to kick up. So there's some, I, I, I love this workout. I do too. I love this workout as an individual workout. Ooh, no rest. Oh, no rest. Just Every two minutes two into minutes. two minutes into <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You're going to tell me this wouldn't be a big separator as far as, like, if this was an individual quarterfinals workout, five rounds every two minutes. This would be a great individual. That's a, and, yes. and your score is muscle ups. And then the tie break would be whatever lift you want to put on the end of you get five minutes after the workout. I know you're not yeah. a fan of that, but it's probably coming. So I'd, th- your, I would love that. You know, you get muscle up for a score, then you get a lift for a score. And you got to do some fitness to get to the muscle ups. That's good. I like this one. I do too. This is my favorite one of the team workouts. I'm not near as in the team stuff as you are or like uh, Pedro. Mm. But this is this was my favorite one of the team workouts. Some of the other ones I just think are nonsense. <laughs> well, let's get to team event Number two. So for this one, we have the dumbbell snatch is coming back. 70 and 50 pounds. Full team. Back facing the dumbbells, everybody. And then toes to bar in synchro pairs. Now this is where reading the rules and the standards is very important. Because the pairs themselves don't have to be synchro with the other pair. They just have to get the work done. 50 alternating dumbbell snatches at 70 and 50. 50 toes to bar synchro with your male female pairings. 50 total. 50. Well, both pair must do 50. Gotcha. Yeah. Must do 50 and then 30 and 30. And we look at that 20 minute cap, synchronized. Everyone does the work together. When I uh, see this, from my, I don't want to analyze too much. We'll just more talk about the event itself, but dumbbell snatches at this weight and toes to bar, we saw this come up in an age group qualifier a couple years ago with the, uh, with the individuals. I think it was three rounds of 21 of each. Or maybe it was a, yeah, I think it was, or was it an individual one? It was quarterfinals. I believe it was just age group. Uh, so we've seen this pairing before. So this one, I like having everyone synchronized. Like you said, you can't exactly get the worm in quarterfinals, but what you can do is mimic the team movement like a worm does, although you're not get penalized physically well, if that's someone kind of a lifts. hard reach. Well, I'm saying it's like this is it's not replicating the stimulus, but it's just getting all four people to move something at the same time. Yeah, that's, this, that's the only connection I'm putting there is not not being the same thing. But since we can't do something really all at once with one object, this is probably the best they can do in quarterfinals. So like the thing and like you can you might be able to speak better of this and this might just be my naive naive naivety. Yeah, I got you. Uh, how do you say that? I think that's right. Naivety. Um, of like I'm always thinking individual. I'm individual. Like that's who I think about when I'm in, you know when I do my rankings and picks and all that mm. stuff. I don't think in the team manner. Like this workout, I just think you are what your weakest link is. Whoever can't do the dumbbell snatches because the weight's heavy for them, or whoever can't do the toes to bar because there's like you're you are as good as just your weakest link. Yes, really of the whole team because yes. everybody has to do. The amount of reps doesn't matter who you pair with. Whoever the worst one is, that's your score. And I'm not a big fan of workouts like that on a, on the team side because the better person can't cover for that worse person. Like can't make up for it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like like it's it's the team. You know what I mean? If I, we're playing basketball and we got a real <laughs> sucky center but our point guard scores 40 and we right. win because of that you see what i'm like I, I just feel like i like workouts where like this person's struggling mm-hmm. and then rich is going to help them until rich throws himself in the dirt and right. then maybe the team doesn't make it maybe he pulls through <laughs> you know what i'm saying like yeah 
And then if nobody struggles, like your whole team is strong, so nobody struggles on the dumbbell snatch, mm -hmm. then then you're you have more time to do the toasted bar. Then your team should be better, right? Right. So like, that's how I feel about this workout. And that's this is this is a low man event, right? Your weakest link event, if you like to call the same thing, which is why team implements are thrown in there. And I implement, I mean by not to bring back the worm again, but that's the whole point, right? If you got one person who can't move the worm like the rest of everybody, everybody suffers at the speed and pace of that one person. With synchro, synchro work in general with a whole team, same concept applies, weakest link movement. And like you said, yes, on the pairs, even though it's male-female pairs mixed up, it only takes one person to slow down the whole team because no one can move on because they're all doing 50. It was sharing 50, that's different. Mm -hmm. right? You're 25, maybe R25, or hey, we're suffering, so you guys got to do like 35 to R15, right? Because Chase over here is just sucking wind after those 50 dumbbell snatches at a 70 pound just absolutely smoked him. So wait we're going to have to... The <laughs> we're going to, yeah, wait till the devil. <laughs> I can do, I can, yeah, I can, I can do that, but not well. Um, but yeah, this is a weak link thing. And now as far as approach, when you guys are looking at your team taking on these events, from a strategy perspective is what is going to take the most time for your team? Is it the dumbbell snatches? Is it the toes to bar? What's the fatigue going to be more apparent? I would say it's toes to bar because a dumbbell snatch at 50 reps, even if you're like, hey, we're just going to do five sets of 10 synchro, take a little shake and go again. Maybe that's five to 10 seconds on the break. And in the very beginning, it feels really slow. But when you look at the totality of 100 total, and you, know, you talked about mayhem all the time, if there's 50 worm thrusters, what's mayhem doing? They're doing 10 and they're dropping the worm mm -hmm. or they're sitting there and standing resting. And they're the last people through the first half and they are the first team on the back half by a minute. It's the same thing with these dumbbell snatches. Do not get in a, a mindset as a team that though toes to bar might take us more time than the dumbbell snatches, meaning we need to get there faster. There's a difference between getting there faster and then getting there fresher. And you wanna to get to the dumbbell, or you wanna to get to the toes to bar more fresh as a team so you can keep your sets. And I would say for the first 50, maybe you're doing sets of 10 like you did on dumbbell snatches, but there's nothing wrong with five. Five reset. I think that depends on your toe to bar capacity. Like who, you gotta know who you're working with. Exactly, and there's, in, in the first 50, it is better to start slower because you still have 50 to go, but it'll be easier because it's split 30-20. But what can't happen is you can't start with 10s when you should have started at 5s and you'll be down to 2s by the time you get to the 30s. And you'll still have the same 5 to 10 second break times 3 of what you had in the first round. You got to pace out the first set of 50, fine tune what you have in the second set of 30, and then when it comes to the 20, you guys just have an honest conversation of the weak link in the group and say, how fast can we go? How much time do you need? Because if they jump up too soon, it's just like jumping up for a legless rope climb at the games where one miss now becomes a two minute loss. <laughs> it might not be that bad. Not that bad, but I'm just, you know, I just wanted to make sure people are paying attention. So that's, that's just, that's how I look at that one for this. As far as teamwork in a team event, as I walk through it, there's a, I would say not only you're working as a team synchronized and even though you're doing pairs synchro, there's a lot more strategy in this event than say the first event. And I'll say even more strategy in this event, regardless of like a dumbbell snatch and toes of ours, not sexy. Yeah, you're right, it's not, but it's effective. Everyone's doing synchro and this is a massive team strategy event more than I would say we've seen in the last three years of quarterfinals. So as basic as this is, it's actually not the worst team event for testing teamwork and work capacity with dumbbell snatches and toes to bar. I think this is just uh, whoever has the least amount of ego is going to do the best. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, all right. Team workout number three. We are working in pairs again. This time we are working in same sex pairs. Men will go first. They'll row a 500 meter side by side. So you can't move on to the next movement until that 500 meter row is done. You'll have 50 handstand push-ups in the middle. 
switch as needed so you are sharing the work for these 50. And then you have 50 synchro wall ball shots at 20 to a 10 foot target. Once they're done, the women will go. And then pair two will go the opposite direction once they come back. So pair one, followed by pair two, followed by pair one, followed by pair two. Working the way opposite way on the way back. Um, it's funny as I, we, I saw you guys having this conversation of meters versus uh, cows. cows. Right? I mean, the teams have rode for meters before. They did it last year. Mm -hmm. They had an interval workout last year with the row, shoulder overhead, and ring muscle up one. A lot like the format we saw in the first one. If this were more of a race, more of like a relay, I could see something in here being, you know, 500 meter row at a certain pace for the entirety of the workout. You're probably looking at a comfortable 145 or less row pace for most men, sub two for the women, uh, especially when you have rest coming up on the handstand push-ups in an interval setting. So if you looked at Cal's, I know it's 50 reps, 50 reps, 50 reps doesn't match as far as cows to a 500 meter. It's more like maybe 40. Um, maybe. Now, I have a question for you. Yeah. Do you not think a 30 cal row would be a more devastating test? I would if it was about the row. But this workout but why is the row about even the row. there. It's the same reason it was in there in 24.2. It's just to get people tired. Or to make mistakes. <laughs> like, I would have liked, like, 30, or 30 wall balls mm -hmm. then instead. You could go, or 30, 40 handstand push-ups, 50 wall balls, 30, you know what I mean? And then you can go down the line like that. Like, I just, it just feels irrelevant. Well, let's break it down a little bit more. Because how it's going to work is the men's going to go 550-50, then the women will go. Same format. And then the men will come back and go the opposite way of 50, 50, 500. If there's not going to be a lot of separation on the handstand push-ups and wall, like wall ball shots, that's unbroken. There's no question. No, it's only 50. No question the wall ball shots. The handstand push-ups, we could look at it like the same thing of muscle-ups. Maybe someone has a better handstand push-up. Maybe they're going to pace the roll a little bit more because you can, you can bang more buck on less breaks and transitions on the handstand push-ups. But what's going to be tough is with your top teams is there's not going to be a whole lot of separation on the handstand push-ups per se. It's only 50. It's kipping. And you're telling me like you're not going to knock out 25 and the next person's going to knock out 25? And then do 50 synchro wall ball shots together in their sleep? That's Probably fine. 50? I mean, 25, well, 25, like do 25 kipping handstand push-ups immediately into 50 wall balls and then yeah. re repeat it? I'm a little taller than you, John. <laughs> that, might, that might play into that. But with rest, you can't hang on for that? Yeah. I no, think you I, can. I know. But, but here's the thing, right? But here's my point. Like, I, I could hang. I, yes, I could do this unbroken. But it would be really hard for me to do it unbroken. But I could. Right. Like, I just feel like there's just not a lot of separation here. <laughs> I agree. Like, and, and there's not. So now I'm looking at the row like Helen. The run in Helen. Is the row then, then now going to be... Why would you just do 30 cows then? Because then it, it makes you want to sprint more. You okay, get so rewarded you're, you're for actually, sprinting you're, more. You're talking me into the cow more. Because look, even on the row, is like, listen, us rowing a 140 is not worth right. five and seconds. So cows. let's row the 145. Shoot, let's row a 150. If you row a 140 team, good on you. You got 10 seconds on us. But we're coming into the handstand push-ups fresh. Mm -hmm. And like a cow would reward sending it a little bit more. Well, definitely at the end. But still at the I, end, you're, it depends on who's the better rower because they're pretty much worthless at the end anyways. It's just your weaker rower. I see the argument for cows. I, I don't see the meters cows thing having as 
massive of a difference no, to be I'm a saying, game changer either way. I, I agree with you, but what I'm saying is there is not a game changer. All right, fair. So uh, like, for the that would make it a little bit more mm. separation than it has because I, I just don't think it has very much separation. I think you and Bill could do this workout. Me and Tyler could do this workout. We're four completely different people, <laughs> and true. we would end up around the same spot. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Okay. You'll have to the, – the thing here is that you're going to have to execute flawlessly. And this might be one of those. I would have liked a heavy wall ball. That would have made this workout so much better. Heavy wall ball. I did heavy wall balls this morning. I'll, I'll, here's one you should try if you okay. ever oh, run you out, me, of, you one out of program. 21, 15, 9, 15, 21. Ski cows and heavy wall ball shots. Okay. I like that. It was, it was rough. But yeah, you're, heavy there. I know you're really good at both of those things. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, I was not good this morning. I, I got through the, uh, is, I was in the round of nine. I was like, maybe I'll just stop here. That's the thing when you program for had yourself, you're like, oh, this is a stupid workout. I, I would have never, had I known it would have felt like this, but I kept going. Yes, Jules, it was gross. Um, but when you and Bill go back and like correct the programming, yeah. Um, I think a 30 pound wall ball would create all the separation in the world, like, or make those 50 handstand push ups way mm. juicier than they were they would have been without without it you know on the second time through i think yeah. it would get even more separation you know what i'm saying and yeah. then the fittest teams would you know win out so i'll push back on a little bit on the fittest teams because yes if you if you up the weight on the wall ball and go an extra step is like make the handstand push up strict i'm actually See, more I surprised think that's too much Right, no, and I'm, I'm getting there, right? So okay. it's like, okay, we made it strict. We made it, say we made it 50 cals and strict handstand push-ups and heavy wall ball shots. Yeah, the better, fitter teams are going to get there just because they're better at those movements, per se, at that volume, not necessarily at the intensity because it's not going to be there. You're not going to be as intense on the row for 50, even if it was 30, say it was 30, because you have the strict coming up and the heavy wall ball shots at the end, like, that's when, yeah, very few, if any, teams are going unbroken on the 50 heavy. When you bring it down to this level, and not saying this is down a level at all. Look, it's 500-meter row, 50 handstand push and synchro wall ball shots. The fitness has Solid to be Solid open there. workout right there. Well, in a sense, yes. But the fitness cannot be faked in this workout. Because, yes, at its base level for the majority – Everyone is about the same, right? You, me, Tyler, like we're majority. We're median to above median. But like, you get what I'm saying? Yep. You take semifinal games athletes and they're going to have to now, because of the way this is designed, hurt themselves. Row right. faster, do bigger sets on handstand push ups, and go unbroken. And then in an attempt to recover from the intensity that they have to go now, right? And I would, so I would say it's like, it's not that the fittest or a heavier wall that's going to test fitness better. It's like, actually, this one is going to require more fitness because of the way it's programmed. I think the barrier to entry to doing it unbroken is low. As far as not being difficult enough? Yes. <sighs> Until you have to row faster than you want to and do bigger sets of handstand push-ups, then you're maybe pushing the – boundary for those 50 become drastically different i think we, at this this programming everyone's going to have to go harder than they than they thought because of the way it's programmed which will have an effect on the wall ball shots but even on the back half on the back half that's 50 it's a 50 buy-in you don't even have to go hard you can only go so fast mm -hmm. going faster on wall ball shots don't actually make them faster no, they the just back make half row is going to be incredibly painful i'm but not ending on the saying row that, but <laughs> is the nastiest thing they could have thrown at. But, but I'm not teams. saying it's not going to hurt you. I'm yeah. just saying we can both sell our soul and one of us is going to be one second faster than the other. You'll have to. You, but, but Yeah, you'll have to. It's so much work for zero separation is what I'm saying. And yeah, I think a 30-pound wall ball would make it just a little bit more. You yeah. wouldn't be and able to I'm not disagreeing so with that, and I actually I do agree with you there. 
And I also think the women's target should be 10 feet, but I've always thought that since the beginning of programming time. But for those that are just listening, it's not always punt to heavier, punt to harder, and that'll separate the pack. And that's not what I'm saying. No, I'm I, a, I know I'm you're not. Grit. I'm just saying those that may not understand what we're throwing out at the yeah, time. Yeah. So I'm just giving a lesson. I'm not giving you a lesson. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and as, I, uh, as I talk this out more, it's like, okay, interval-based, pair work, strategy involved. This is one I think is going to have to get repeated once or twice. Just to beat your time by like five seconds. Or <laughs> change something. Hey, I'm hearing some times, I'm hearing some whispers, we rode way too slow. Yeah. Or we took too many transitions on handstand push-ups because we thought we are going to blow up, and the 50 is the 50, right? Or it's like, dude, I totally pussed out on the last 500-meter row. <laughs> I could have gone three seconds faster, right? And gave our girls a chance to go three seconds faster. Like you said, it's, it's all coming down to that. I think this is one that is not going to devastate anyone other than that last 500. It's just not going to be something you're going to want to do again. Although I don't think anybody's going to be as fresh as they think that they're going to have to do something, but it'll definitely be above the line of which people want to ride. Do you think the women have the ability to separate more than the men? Only if you got two of them. Two good ones? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Because the 500 is the same. That just gives them more distance to create the more distance hands on the and others. push-ups bails the women out so hard. Yeah. Would you rather have, okay, I'll give you would you rather. Would you pick one? Okay. 50 strict or 50 heavy wall balls? For a better test, 50 heavy wall balls. Okay. All day, every day. I think that makes this so good because I think not a lot of people can do 50 heavy wall balls two times through unbroken. I think Especially it hurts like the row. Now. Under fatigue. Yeah, right. The wall balls then, hurt like the row if they're heavier. Yes, and I think that affects the handstand push-ups. She still gets a kip, so it only affects it so much. But I mm -hmm. do think it affects it. Fifty strict handstand push-ups just make it a strict handstand push-up workout. Then okay. it's literally like just who's the best at strict handstand push-ups. But do you There's feel like the not strict even a fitness element involved? I or it takes it away almost with fifty strict handstand push-ups. Me personally, if I was doing it, <laughs> I would rather fifty strict handstand push-ups. But you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you feel like if you, because if, if you look at the row and you look at the wall wall shots, like that's tall, big boy movements, two of the three. Kipping gives them an out too. Strict might offset the size of sure, teams. Sure, but there are people who can do like like if you're really good at strict handstand pushups, like and you're a little guy, mm -hmm. like then you can just do fifty unbroken. Like, <laughs> and like the advantage is so enormous for little guys versus big guys on handstand pushups. And the mm -hmm. five hundred meter row, I would argue, is uh, negligible, like um, okay, versus fifty handstand push-ups, and then. But what does that do to them on the wall ball shots? Not, I don't think with the twenty pound wall ball, I don't think it does a ton. But if they do the bulk majority coming off a row that they had to row faster than their counterpart did, like you're putting them in a pretty big hole going into the wall ball shots. Sure, but you get a big rest. You just got to do it twice. All right, yeah. I, honestly, I like. I just want to circle around the conversation because, at, look, we just came up with five different scenarios, which just means right, there's more I, to this event than on paper. I want to combat Halpin's comment really quick. Uh, are you, can you put For it which one? There? This one? Halpin yeah. says, the amount uh, of communication on the synchro wall ball that, that need to hit at the same time, I believe, is a the reason they didn't go higher and heavier. So to combat that, Halpin, I did a competition with a guy named Nikita, uh, we had never met each other in person before. We first time we saw each other was the day of the competition. It was JR's uh, crash crucible um, a team competition. And there were synchro 30 pound wall balls and we were fine the whole freaking time. Every single time, not one no rep. So that's complete BS because it's not that hard to do. Well, you just wait till that person gets down with you and then you throw it at the same time. It is not that hard. It can be hard for some people. <laughs> well, it wasn't hard for us, man. We never met each other before. All I'm saying is I had never done it before, and we were fine. They had heavy synchro wall ball shots at regionals in 2018 for teams. Well, they didn't know oh, what no, sorry, wall 2017. Ball was in 2017. 20, sorry, Chase. 2017. 2017. 
Yeah, it, it was definitely a big separator. We had done them all the time, so it was kind of nice. Although I almost knocked myself unconscious because I hit the, it was these plastic things that they had off the rig, so they were just kind of a floating target. And for a 30-pound ball, when you're doing big sets, it'll start to pack. Right? It'll start to get, you guys ever fill mm -hmm. up a beach ball with water? If you do more than like 10 to 15 reps, every time you catch the ball, it starts to pack and get off weight. And so I hit the bottom of this. It comes down, hits me in the chin, and I'm seeing fog for like 10 seconds. I'm like trying to find my partner as if we're in like a dark room. I almost completely knocked myself unconscious. The rogue ones stay together pretty good. Did you have a Titan one? Because I have a Titan. No, it was at, it was at regional. So it was oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. I, I just heightened 30 pound wall ball and it was like horrendous yeah. after a few times. It's rough. It's a real thing. And you hear people complain about it. It's, it's, yeah, it's the real deal. But um, all right. So that's, that's event number three. There's only four events, there's only four scores for this. But I mean, as much as we circled around this, you know, there's there's a a big strategy component here. I think this is very Helen esque, as far as triplet monostructural gymnastics weightlifting. You're gonna have to, in the same vein of, you're gonna have to row faster and do everything a bit more harder than you plan to, um, but stay calm and stay in sync on the wall ball shots. Because, like I said before, is like you can't make those faster. You can only screw yourselves up more. Um, all right, last one. We have team workout number four. On uh, the past few years, it has always been a relay. And this one is not that. It's a bit of a chipper. So you have it's 30 deadlifts. Devastating. What's that? It's going to be devastating. 30 deadlifts for the women. Followed by 30 deadlifts for the men. The women go 30 shoulder overhead. Men, 30 shoulder overhead. The weight for the deadlift is 315 for the men, 205 for the women, and 185 shoulder overhead and 125, which is the same weights with the same movement we had last year in 2022, 185 and 125. It's the same weight we have on the squats, which is one of those things there's some, I would say, uh, it makes it easy for the number of weights you need. And, you know, if you guys want to go team next year, Make sure you got your 185, 125 movements dialed in because <laughs> this is the second year in a row. That's the only weight we used. Uh, 315, 205 between men and women. That should be 225. If you yeah. want to keep the 125 shoulder ahead, I've seen that work out better, especially in examples of 2020 CrossFit games. Uh, I thought the women's shoulder over weight was too light relative to the men, and it turned out to actually be just fine. That's a little bit different. Shoulder overhead capacity between men and women is a bit different just because of anatomy and biology. But 225, come on. They, they can do it. And, John, I said this earlier because I've seen some people talk about this as if we're bringing in a new demographic for teams. We're not. The team competition is unchanged. It has always taken the top 25% out of quarterfinals. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's, all, it's been the same. So all these events we've had for the last three years do not need to be watered down or changed because of the top 25%. It's always been the top 25%. The only thing that they might are thinking about is simplicity of running this in affiliate. But even in a group class setting, nobody's doing team workouts in a one-hour group class setting. All that stuff, floor plans, top 25%, programming done in the class, that is all for the individuals. Yeah, nobody's doing 15-minute AMRAPs of 315 no. deadlifts. The team competition is unchanged this year. So if yeah. anybody's like, oh, this is why they didn't. No, it's not. It's the same event they've had for the last three years. I don't want anybody to forget that. Give too many passes out Including there. Including CrossFit. Climb a freaking rope. Do a freaking GHG setup. <laughs> You could have had them for the team. I, you weren't going to get them for individuals. I still don't think you're getting them. Um, but for, for this one, it's same-sex pairs, and it share the work. So it's not 30 synchro reps for the women and then the men. It's 30 total. So when I'm paired up with John, I'm like, hey, guess what, buddy? I hope you're ready to do 20 deadlifts. <laughs> I'll do, we're gonna, you do seven, I'll do three. <laughs> And we'll do three. But here's the thing, right? I really like 
the freedom they're giving the teams to strategize more. Because in other formats, say any relay format they've ever programmed, I've loved all the events, but they force them to go in a specific order. Now, if it's just a one-off relay, fine. But some of these relays bled into a different movement or a, like a, a lift. Like it shouldn't matter the order. I should get to pick my order. It's a team competition. Right? This, the order doesn't matter, but you get to share the reps. Whereas in years past, this would have been synchro work. Synchro deadlifts, synchro shoulder overhead. Now, share the load. I'm much better shoulder overhead than I am pulling off the floor. That's a low bar. But if me, and, and say maybe I'm partnered with John and his shoulder overhead isn't as good as mine, so then we offset each other's strength and weaknesses between the two movements. I think if I was partnered with you in this workout, I would just die in this workout. It would, it would just be me lifting the whole time. <laughs> like, like terribly. Yeah, I, that would be. It would be so bad, Chase. I would be dead after. And, and the worst part is, is like you would be doing that to because I would have an inability to. Our then, team needs it. No, it's not. Yeah. Not your fault. Like no, it's not. but like, but unfortunately, in the previous one on the row handstand push up wall ball one, I would just like drag your ass through that one too. So like you're getting you're getting the worst end of the stick for both. Yeah, I'm like, let's row, grow. Get like, let's row faster. We can do this. I'm trying. We're going unbroken on the wall ball shots. <laughs> but. um no, this is just a 15-minute AMRAP alternating through this. And this one is going to be – this. I think this is going to be nasty. Now, like, you do have a, a really a big break. Sort um, of. Before you're doing anything. Like, I mean, the dead, I think the deadlifts are the worst part. Would you agree with that? Yes. So what I'm saying is you get through the 30 – say if we're the men and we're, we get through the 30 deadlifts – the shoulder overhead is not affecting us near as bad as far as like the bot or your body like breaking down. True. And you're going to say you do 10 and then you do 10 and I do five and you do five. Like we're breaking that up. And then mm -hmm. we get to wait for the women to be done with the 30 deadlifts again. Like it's way more break than you might think, but I, I, it is going to be, it's still going to rip you apart. It's just. Well, especially when you get back to that second round of shoulder to overhead, I think is when everything starts to slap you in the face with reality is because those deadlifts and the midline of deads into shoulder to overhead back to deads. When you get back to that bar and you do your first shoulder to overhead, you're going to find out how much midline you have left. And the answer is probably going to be not much. And then at that time, it's going to be like, I'll do three deadlifts. You'll do one. I'll do three <laughs> deadlifts. You'll do one. You know, what I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, so here's the thing, that's right? That's what teams are going to be like, though. Like, that's, and they're well, just going to break it up like that. I want to know if there's any rules about where people stand. I just write it in front of each other. Okay. So then why would we do any more than two or three at a time? Even from the beginning. What, like, as long as the bar is still moving. Who cares? Yeah. No, you're completely right. Yeah. Right? I would not. Yeah. I wouldn't roast myself at all. If you can stand right in front of each other and they don't make you like run from a line to, to the bar or something. I don't see anything. Oh, um, right. yeah. I you would can't do, pass the bar overhead. So that's one. If somebody's significantly stronger, I would do two or three to that person's one, but then do that the whole time. And then the shoulder to overhead, the exact opposite, chew up big sets in the shoulder to overhead. Yeah. So I'm going through the score sheet here. And barbell starts on the ground. Okay, nothing about that. The only thing they have as far as like requirements is you can't pass the bar overhead. Dang it. I was so going to do that with you. <laughs> Can you imagine it, somebody tossing you 185? Dude, we used to do that shit all the time back in the day. Dude, just you know what? I'm just thinking of like Austin Maliolo and James Hobart in this workout. <laughs> like would be amazing. Yeah. Yep, that's what would happen, especially if we're passing off shoulder to sh front to front. No, I agree. I think you should just, I mean, yeah, twos, back and forth. Yeah, so let's talk strategy a little bit. No, wait, that's the wrong one. Got so many tams up. Depending on your strengths, I think the deadlifts is not as important as a shoulder to overhead. So I think breaking After up the deadlifts. About. Yeah, like yeah. You, you, the shoulder overhead is going to take more time than the deadlifts. The reps take longer to do, even though they're lighter. 
But like deadlifts, if you have any type of capacity at all, you're talking a rep a second, maybe a second and a half. If you're transitioning quick, that's going to keep moving. Shoulder overhead is not that. It's mm. two seconds a rep. At 185, not mm. trying to screw anything up or get out of control. You can go pretty quick. You can go quick, but not as quick as deadlifts. I don't know, man. I think it's like the same speed. Transition's also slower because you got to pull it off the floor and power clean it to your shoulders. Yes. All right. The, the shoulder overhead is just going to take longer. And when you get tired there, they go much slower. Yes. Yes. Right. And if I have to break up more sets, we've just doubled or tripled our transition time because it's not just me stepping back and you picking up a bar off the floor on a deadlift. The shoulder overhead is going to be the crux of this workout, period, for both now, teams, especially on the women's side. Would you, would you bury yourself in the shoulder to overhead knowing you have a big break and so you have to go again? Or would you have planned breaks and do like 10, 10, 5, 5? Because you could probably bank a lot of time if you went 15, 15 or 20, 10, you know, whatever. Would right. Break it up however. And – like you might be able to bank time doing that versus planned breaks on the shoulder to overhead specifically, knowing you're going to kind of have rest in the deadlifts. It's still going to be rough, but yeah, you know, I'm not saying deadlifts are going to be a cakewalk, especially for me. But but you're you know you're splitting that up so much. like it's that's you know we're just in a little bit of a grind on those, mm -hmm. right? Would you bury yourself in the shoulder to overhead then each time? <sighs> No, because the, the failure element there will be much more detrimental than deadlifts. This is one I don't think you want to redo. This is, yeah, this is the one. Yeah, you're right. This is the one where you will feel the next two days. Well, here, how about this? Like, I think what I would do is I would do 10 reps of each and then just extrapolate that to 30. Mm -hmm. That way you know what a, your time would be per round, roughly. Obviously, it's rough, right? But per round, and if you know you're only going to be able to go through it fully, like two or three times, yeah, you know, maybe you got three sets of 15. I feel like that's just not worth it in the beginning. 15 minutes is going to be a long time. Well, I but mean, no, but like you did that math beforehand. Like, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Like, like, like if you do that math beforehand, you'll know. And like, if it's like, we all, we're going to get through it four or five times, mm -hmm. then, then have planned breaks and know, and like, you'll know, you know what right. I mean? Like where you're going to be at. Yeah. This might have to be one you do need to repeat. Maybe no. this is the one. So this is what I've done in the past, even though like. You're going to get sore, but I don't think that bad because you're going to get, there's a lot of breaks in there, but this might be one where you just tell the team is like operate at 80% intent. Like you're just going through the motions, move well, don't move fast until after the first round. And then you'll know where you're at. Yeah. Maybe you just do five minutes. Yeah. Hey, five minutes at 80%. Cool. Maybe let's try another five at 100%. And then see where we're at. Right. So you don't have to repeat the whole thing because you'll know. Five minutes, like, okay, listen, I did, uh, we did eight sevens on all of it. Deadlifts and shoulder overhead. And I was like, I felt fine. Okay. The next time we go, let's go tens and fives. But at max intensity. Dude, I don't think you're repeating this. You do four rounds in this. So you did 120 deadlifts with 315. Well, that's what I'm saying five minutes. No, no, no. no, no. Oh, oh. I thought you were the saying five, like the next I'm, No, 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 no. I'm yeah, talking about the yeah. five-minute idea. Yeah. I think this right? is the last workout you do no matter what. And you just yeah, you just do it as best as you can and it's done. But <laughs> Halpin's question, would you do this one earlier like tomorrow, Friday, then reattempt Monday? The only reason why I wouldn't do this earlier is because this one would affect the other three. It'll affect, yeah. Right, like if I've got the front squat one, which we said, it's all about the front squat capacity there, not necessarily the ring capacity for the best teams. This combo of movements is gonna make that so much more difficult. If I look at the dumbbell snatch one, right? We forget there's a freaking... 100 dumbbell snatches at 70 and 50 
and the hundred toes to bar before you even come to this one. Let alone mm-hmm. do this one before that one. And the and the 50 and the front row, squats at yeah. one eighty five. If your right. back is shot for fifty front squats at one eighty five, good luck. Yeah. It's a it's a great question though. If if we want to just give advice to teams, is like I would save this for the end and give yourself two days to do it. Well, I, advice for anybody, I think anybody competing in quarterfinals, when the work teams or individuals, like when the workouts come out, whatever workout is going to hurt your body the most, <laughs> that's the last workout you do. Yeah. No matter what the order is, like you got a huge window. You got like a four day window to do a three or four day window to do. Uh, to do the first submission. Yep. So if it's the second workout or if it's the second workout, you got to submit it first, then I would do all, I would do three of the four workouts and then do that one on that day and then give yourself a two day rest and then do the last workout and the last submission day. But you always want to do the workout that's going to hurt your body the most last. And, and the reason there is, is because if this one workout is going to hurt me the most, that also means it's going to hurt the other three events I haven't done yet versus the other three events might get me more tired for the event that's going to hurt me the most, but it's just the one event that it's affecting me on. So you're just working on the 25%, not affecting the other 75%, versus being good at 75% and maybe affecting that other 25%. It'd be like, what if uh, 2020 they did at Atlanta as the first event? <laughs> yeah. That would make everybody yeah. work. And that's, and that's, yeah, that's, that's the vein we're talking about and in, in as we were going through that. But yeah, that's it. I have to see how they go. I mean, the more I talk through them, I do think I, I the more like as we talked about it, I don't dislike them as much as I did like first glance. Mm-hmm. I do think it's awfully repetitive from the open, movements wise. Okay, deadlifts, dumbbell snatches, just hinge, row. hinge, city. Like, oh, like yeah. Dave <laughs> loves freaking deadlifts so much okay so you have a hundred dumbbell snatches at a heavier weight you're right pulling from the floor and then yeah we're bringing the deadlifts back at 90 heavier. to 150 at 315 yeah of 50 percent of the events that are programmed uh, i feel like there's not a ton of gymnastics yeah yeah toes to bar and ring muscle ups and then that's about it if but you five can't stand five what what do we say five 20 second attempts at ring muscle ups but I mean, that's a high skill. I'll, I'll, it is I'll, right. I'll that's throw good. That in and there. that's the whole. That's the whole event, that's right? You're workout. only getting scored on that. So that's the yeah. crux of the workout. And event. well, not the crux, but like that's the but main. But other thing. than that, that's about it, man. Like the handstand push-ups are negligible. I don't count that at all. Like it's it's kipping. <sighs> so maybe it should have been strict. You know what I mean? Well, no, because then that's that's one. That's fifty percent of the events that are. Yeah, yeah. I'm right. just saying. There's. I just feel like gymnastics was is not tested a ton. But it matters the most. In event one, one okay, event one, it's only muscle-ups. Event two, we already said, it's the toes-to-bar capacity. That's half of the events. I guess. I'm just, you know, I don't want to make you start liking these, but I'm well, just... Well, then it's just not enough. <laughs> Is that fair? Uh, fair, but event three... Because I feel like we test endurance or, or condition capacity, yep. and I feel like we test strength. It's more, it's more strength endurance than strength. Like, it's not like a... a but team True, workouts are wildly but you different. You can't be weak and be successful. 100%. And team workouts, I think, are much, much more different yeah. than individuals. I would say event four tests strength, strength. and it's stamina strength. and strength, stamina, and power more than the heavy clean and jerk event we had last year for teams. Whoa. It was only five minutes. Okay. It was only clean okay. and jerks, sure, and they sure. did one I at agree. a time. I agree, but I like the clean and jerk one much better. <laughs> Fair opinion. Sure, right? sure, sure. But if no, I look at what we we're testing, strength. right? I'm if I'm we... testing a team of their strength, stamina, and power, event four checks a lot of those boxes that the other three are not doing. One hundred no. 100%. And if event four needs to be there, and I feel I feel like for the most part, it tests everything fine. Yeah. But like, there's not a lot of hard gymnastics. Here, I'll, I'll caveat no, that. You're right. But you're right. it's testing for teams, mm-hmm. and teams don't necessarily need the hard gymnastics. But like what they're talking about on spin, which it hasn't been the last two years, and I know you were listening. Yeah. Um, 
if it's any indication of what individuals will be like, I will be thoroughly disappointed. But <clears throat> individuals has not been anything like teams the last two years. So yeah. I don't expect it to be like that. Yeah. There's more teamwork involved in strategy than years past here for sure too. I, I agree right? with that. I agree with and that. And so when we look at the overall thing, the test a team is like, look, we're already talking, okay, is gymnastics getting tested? Yes. Do gymnastics are the key point of half of the events? Yes. Is there an interval-based test of work capacity and straight work in three? Yes. Is there a strength, power, stamina test in event four? Yes. Okay. So there's at least some good balance and breadth of tests there for a team setting. And now we're looking at, okay, in event one, how are we testing the team? Well, it's their total work capacity working in synchro work and then on the rings. Okay. In event two is like, how do they stay together as a team and work around the one person that might not be the best at either one of those movements? All right, how do we strategize there? In three is like, how do we strategize our paces? How do we strategize the way we break up the handstand push-ups? Wall ball shots, that we said, is already unbroken. And then in this one, this is just like, how do we shell game this with Chase's weak ass deadlift the best we can or, or whatever? strategizing but, around your weak people for sure. Yeah, and that's what team competitions should have is a massive element of team strategy in different ways. It's not always strategize the weakest person. Everybody hold on to this rope. Everybody hold on to this worm. Everybody push this sled. Everybody like that's that's punting the can down the road of team strategy. That's not it, right? This is we can actually decide how to not have a weak link by moving the pieces around, which I really do like this year and it's more than we've ever had in the last 3 Okay, I don't disagree, and I think if you go down the line of does it test X, X, and X, that would be as yes. Yeah, I think it does successfully. Now, my question, my question to you though, and you guys, and I apologize if you've talked about it on an episode and I haven't heard it. Do you think it's necessary to test harder movements like handstand walking, rope climbs, GHGs? Or, or like we'll get there in semifinals because I, and again, I know teams is different. And if you're any good at all, you'll make semifinals for teams. I don't think people are aware of that. Like right. some really bad people make semifinals, like uh, compared yeah. to the elite people, compared yeah. to the elite people. Like if I, if me and you and pick your two girls wanted to make semifinals, we could, you know what I mean? 100%. You might need a better guy. <laughs> I'll take care of you on that strength workout. I think I think you can, you'll kill some of this stuff. You're fine. Yeah. Do I think it's necessary as the question? Yeah, it's to test harder implements because, and I'm not saying from the jump, yeah. like don't do three legless rope climbs and just people can't do it. Okay. But so I, I do think you should have those things. All right. So here's this: harder things is I think a spectrum, especially in the eye of the beholder in a sense, is like. You wouldn't say those things are harder things? I would say handstand walks are not that hard to do. It's just a skill. Versus handstand push-ups? Yeah. Now Which kipping, different, right? But I don't think I need a handstand walk to make the test harder because i don't think handstand walks are that hard they're not it's just a skill do you have the balance now there's stamina and, and balance and all that but like it's not like testing 30 reps of shoulder to overhead at 185 and 125 mm -hmm. right yep do we or, need or the or olympic lifts. Lifts. or, or olympic like because they didn't have olympic lifts i feel like Could, they should be there <laughs> yeah uh, now you sparked my brain for something but i'll, I'll get to the and i'm not uh, saying they're not testing the stuff no, 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 but I, so what they i'm getting are. to is like do you need a GHD in there because it's hard? GHDs are not that hard to do, especially if you do them. You know what's hard to do? What's harder to race? 50 synchro GHDs as a pair or 50 toes to bar? 50 toes to bar, but okay. then what's harder so then to do? You don't 50 need the GHDs, GHDs and then do Because if I climbs. tested your toes to bar, you'll be doing fine at semifinals when you earn the GHD. You don't need it. You're already testing something harder to do synchro with a team. I would argue 50 GHCs is more devastating to other movements in a workout than 50 synchro toes to bar. But not in the workout at which they programmed. 
50 GSTs are not going to disrupt your dumbbells more than 50 toes to bar. No, that, that's, not, not, even that's not what I'm talking about. Pull up bar. But I'm saying is like, if you're infusing one of these movements for another one, right? Based off of the programming we have. Sure. But like what you're saying, like, it's I, like can, I can program a harder workout with GHDs and handstand walks right now. That would be a harder test in quarterfinals to get people to semifinals. But I'm just looking at what we have, what infusion of a handstand walk is going to make these tests better. Are you going to put it in lieu of, uh, of the handstand pushups? I actually would have liked that. 50 feet of handstand walks times three. I would whatever. like that better than... Hands yeah, I would have loved that. Okay, but is it? Would it have changed the outcome of ability? No, the higher skill teams probably would have done better. I think it does. Uh, yeah, yeah, no. But on the GHD, it's the opposite. But yeah, but okay, you used it that specific workout, and I get mm -hmm. why you used it because it's a toes bar. I'm just going I, off what we have. Right, right, right. But if I could say, okay, 15 GHDs and then 10 front squats at 185 and then max ring muscle ups, I think the GHDs affect that workout way more. Yes, but uh, you got to put it in terms of what we're replacing the GHD with. Take any GHD workout we've had programmed for teams and put toes to bar, and that event's harder with toes to bar. I don't know, most of them have rope climbs in it. So right. It's, and it's, what's, what, and exactly. You, you, you forget you hold onto the rig when you do toes to bar. Is that going to make rope climbs easier or are they going to make them harder? Harder. Okay. No, no, no. But like. Is 70 synchro toes to bar felt, harder okay, than hold on, 70 hold on, synchro hold on, GHD hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not talking about what's harder to do. You're always trying to make the workout harder, Chase. That's not what I'm after. No, okay? that's Bill. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I, what I'm saying is before. like, if you do 50 GHDs yes. in a row, yes. and then you have to do six rope climbs, mm -hmm. those rope climbs, that hip flexor impossibility, like there's very few stimuluses like that, right? Correct. And traditionally they have that. Yes. And I'm saying that they, they should always have that. Fair. I'm saying they don't need that because if you put toes to bar in, it's harder to do. And therefore, the people that's going to semifinals went through a tougher test, and then you could put in GHDs so they can have all the fun they want. I can make a hard GHD workout, but what we're saying is this: what I'm not just done. talking about. I know we're hung up on the GHD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but like, I'm okay, talking about so put in GHDs, rope stuff. climbs, and handstand walks. All the three things that yes. you want in the quarterfinals. Yes. Okay. Let's work within the confines of which we are given with the, move, with the workouts program. I'm not saying make up new workouts because that's unfair. That's too easy to do. Okay, putting in a handstand walk in lieu of, and, and putting in the handstand walk in lieu of handstand pushups, I actually think that would make it a much better overall test. I agree with you there. Okay. Putting in a GHD for the toes to bar. I agree. I think toes to bar is a better call. Much more difficult. Putting rope climbs in lieu of ring muscle ups. I don't you think you get the separation okay. that's, you need. Dude, like, that's, that's a different workout. But I'm just putting it where it could be. We can't just make up a workout. That's yeah, unfair. Yeah, it's called the fifth workout. <laughs> okay. And then, okay, so look at the last one. You said there's no um, Olympic lifts or... Yeah, there's no Olympic lifts. Shoulder Since overhead, we, I guess, is the Olympic lift. You know what I would have I liked? And this will be the last thing to do. Um, I'm gonna, hold on, I'm hold on. Overhead squats? No. 30 clean and jerks at 135 and 95. 30 snatches at 130. Let's just go back between Grace and Isabel. Oh, oh, that would be amazing. Just barbell cycling. That would be great. Now, I, you don't have your heavy you probably thing. Probably make the clean and jerks a little bit heavier just so it's different weights. Or make them both here. I don't know. I, I, both heavier is a lot. Not With what they're trying to test. If, if you want to get the same stimulus, then yeah, you would probably need like 185, 185 clean and, jerks, and, jerks. and then 135 snatches. Yeah. I'm, I, I see like if that was on there, I think it'd be, that'd be my favorite. Obviously, I mean, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I can't say weights are my favorite workout. Trevor was like, duh. But like, hey, I would be an I, you amazing can say workout. it's your favorite workout as long as you acknowledge the fact that you realize that this is, you have now infused personal enjoyment. You know, that would be an amazing workout. It would. 30 clean and jerks at 185 and 125, and then 30 snatches at 135 and 95. They'll probably make it 85 since they only have to, you know, with the barbells, whatever. I think it should think be. Women are weak. No, I, it should be heavier because it's the 25% we've always taken, and we've done that before. Mm -hmm. But now you're, whoa. Now the same numbers are in play. 
I'm not doing 15 unbroken clean and jerks at 185. Right, I might singles. not be doing 10. Yeah, just we're singles, just, just working on the forth. railroad, right? You hit the nail, I hit well, the nail. But you're telling me that's not like, like, think about that. 15 minutes Smoked. of us just going back and forth. Smoked. And and I would argue there's more. Easier to judge. Ish. And I think there's a beauty to being good at the technique. Like, I know it's a strength thing. Oh, for sure. But like when you do something like that for 15 minutes, whoever moves the best mm -hmm. is going to have an advantage in that workout. I like it. And, and I, there's a certain beauty in that. It's not just yeah. like, that's why I, I love 185 snatches mm -hmm. because you can't just be strong. You have to have decent technique to be able to move. Well, look at first really cut. Fast. Look at a 185 pound snatch did to the uh, fittest men and women on the planet. Yeah. In first cut. But no. that's uh, that's reprogramming talk. All that right, folks. Great. That was a great workout. Thanks. First cut was. First cut, one of the best. Yeah. If not one of the best programmed events the CrossFit Games in history. We did a show on that. Yeah. Yeah. I think you picked something gay like push-pull or something. Well, we, we put in uh, the, the greatest event of all time, not just strictly the program. Yeah, yeah. Right. First cut. I, that would be hard to beat if we really <laughs> – First to cut is probably the best programmed event, especially for what it had to do if you want to put that in there, but it was like so sad to watch. <laughs> you just saw a bunch of people just hang on ropes. Missing I'd like snatches. to go down the line and like, like make a, an order. Like not like, not like a March Madness event, uh -huh. but just the top 20. These are the top 20 greatest programmed events for all around fitness. We can do that. That would be fun. That would be fun. All right, folks. Thanks for joining us, John. God bless you. Yeah, Thanks you were going to do this by yourself? I was ready to do this by myself, just talking circles. Man, thank Whatever you. it takes. Good Lord, I came on. Whatever it takes, I know. Everyone is thankful for you, me most of all. Mr. John Young. All right, folks, teams, good luck. Get after it. Listen to the show. Learn a thing or two. Test and retest. And good luck on your bid to semifinals. Thank you, guys. See you later.